That is welcome. We are now in the relaxed environment of the after show conversation. A very day of conversation and discussion here. Power of Fifty, just very seriously, is for the. Um, and I'm just catching up with a few of the key kind of people who are involved in today's discussions. Just to get a little bit of a feel of what we would bring to the conversation, what we would talk about. So the easy bit, the first question I'm asking you is just to tell us who you are. Tell the camera um, exactly who you are, the organisation you use, and then we'll go into the next picture. Sir, sure, we'll do uh, and thank you for having us here. Um, I'm Dennis Altsager from uh, Valtech. Uh, Valtech is a large digital consultancy. Uh, we're really focused on helping companies in the digital transformation and how we can help them learn deeply for ours, how we can do our digital experience. And within Valtech, I am responsible for our service line B2B, which is focusing specifically on the B2B manufacturing space. Cool. Um, and what we do there is we help manufacturers in a couple of areas. One is how do you transition to e-commerce as a manufacturer on a global scale? So how do you for either your new products or your aftermarket do this transition towards true e-commerce? The other one that we want to enter in is more in the service digitalization. Um, we covered a lot of topics on that we today. Did. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think most of our session today was around that. Um, and that's really about okay, how do you build a more scalable organization, how do you expose digital services to your clients, and how do you create a technology landscape to support that, which often also ends up with what we call custom orders, and why yeah. and my install-based type of environment. And uh, one of the key things we need is also help large manufacturers uh, on this journey and making the next steps in it. I, I think that's a really interesting uh, layer of language, actually, it is a journey. It's something I touched on in my closing remarks, is in many ways, it feels like we've been on this journey for 10 years, and yet every year, how we move forward in that journey is well. Look, um, I've been a, a, a proponent of making the focus when we talk about digital transformation, the focus should be on the transformation bit, not the digital bit. Because we've done digitalization and digitization, and now, we're, and that's where you know, companies like Baltech are coming into the fray of saying, well, actually, we, we can change. I was thinking, I touched on this a little bit with IoT. You know, that's not a tool like mobile or cloud that allows us to do what we were doing just better. That allows us to actually transform the way we think about it. I'd like to frame this conversation in two, two phases. Mm -hmm. And the first part, where you know, you've, you've come here, there's 50 service leaders, we knew we were going to have a conversation about uh, a load of different topics. What was the one message? So if, if I decide to at the beginning, that is, what do you want all these guys you're speaking to to walk away from knowing? What was the message you wanted to get to those guys with? I think the key message I want to get across to them is we understand that in this journey around that there's a lot of challenges mm. facing around digital, around technology. And I think a lot of companies are struggling in dealing with these challenges. And what we're seeing is a trend that the way companies treat technology, especially in the digital space, needs to change. Um, uh, you know, in the past, there was a lot of decision making from IT around platform selection. There's a lot of, uh, let's say, jack of all trades yeah. being yeah. implemented. And we see the change happening to more composable architecture, yeah. more composable business models. And I think that is what I wanted to talk about with the district participants. And I feel we got the message across, but I also feel a lot of them understood that this is happening. But I also see that a lot of them are in different levels in yes, the Yes, yes, yes. I, 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 I think it's in one way because we've got so many different industries represented that share these same so many pain points, but at the same time, there are different maturity levels within industry verticals and then within companies. We see that a lot. Um, I, before we move on to the second half of this conversation, just want to pick up a little bit on that, that, that point around which you, you phrase it composable. Um, and that kind of leads into this age of debate. I've been writing about this since, since I started feel so it's new. You know, are we looking at best of breed and solutions and a technology stack? Or are we looking at a platform where we have to make sacrifices perhaps when we have the integration? What's your point on that? Uh, I think it's always a hard point to make, and I think it's very specific to each organization. Oh. I think depending on your maturity, 
it could be that a platform solution fits your current organizational model best. Because I think that is really the deciding factor. It's not about features or the platforms. It's about, okay, what is fit the purpose for your organization? Yeah. And can you actually support what you do? And there we see that the companies that are really trying to make this transition into more advanced digital services, more advanced pitching models, more drives around digital channels, and they, and they are building more integrated digital capabilities. Mm -hmm. These are the companies that we see transition to composable. And, you know, we also call these the composable management. That doesn't mean that, you know, taking a platform decision is the wrong choice. You should always look at, you know, is my organization better suited with a platform solution or are they better suited with a composable solution? And make that decision. But be ready to also change when you need to take the next step in your organization. I think one of the things is actually what you're saying there, which comes from one of these other hangouts in this after show, is, is also it's the digital part should be a lactic part of consideration to a degree. Understand what our challenge is, understand what we want to do, and then we build the solution. Because time is on again, I see organizations that have jumped two feet into a, a new platform, a new solution, a new technology. And then have to rectify it back. But actually, the ones that always succeed, succeed the ones that talk about from you can understand it. Um, I'm going to change this tech ever so slightly now because, like I said, you, you draw so much to the table. You know, you guys, I, I had the joy of sitting in some of the conversations across lunch, coffee, and round tables, you know. But equally, everybody brings something to the table at this point. And one of the things I think that makes it really special. What was the one thing that you would say, what was the one thing you were going to share with your life? Bring it back to HQ, or, or do you want to share with these guys? For me, there are two elements. Um, one was that I was having a conversation during the, the informal evening drinks yesterday, yeah. and he told me that 60% of their online orders are coming from social channels in Southern no. Europe. Which for me, that's the first time I've ever heard about this in the B2B. So yeah. I think that's a takeaway for me again. Yeah. This was more an eye opener for me as well, where I knew social selling is a big thing in retail, consumer, mm. also in the let's say, Asian Asian regions. regions. No, yeah, but in B2B, it wasn't was my yeah. interest. It wasn't my yeah. shit for me. The other one for me is um, interesting enough in your closing speech, you mentioned 2013 surfization. Well, and I've been also following that trend for a long time in what's happening, what's the naming. And I think, you know, for me in 2013, we were talking about surfization. It was more of a theoretical. Yeah, yeah. Over the years, a lot of companies have taken steps in that space, individual levels. What was really interesting for me to see is that most companies are now on the sort of second stage of surfization. Mm -hmm. like, They've got the foundations definitely in place of so the traditional service offering, and now they're moving more to advanced stable services. Yeah. yeah. But they're struggling to get out of that place and really coming from, let's say, reactive to proactive mm -hmm. services. And it's interesting <coughs> that most manufacturers we talk to, they're all in the same space. Yeah. So it's not that the market hasn't done anything, but I think the journey is going slow. But I also expect that there will be an acceleration in those last few steps. In yeah, and I, I think we're kind of hitting the the last point, you know, where, where everyone's kind of close to that point, and then we are see, we're going to see that signal. Um, final question, really, really quick, simple reason. I mentioned again in my closing speech, um, I sat at the back, or stood at the back, for very specific reasons. I felt that, for me, what sets this apart from you know, many of the original conferences here is the fact that everyone will speak that. We had great facilitators, but it's like yourself, you know, bringing conversations together. But, you know, I, I've got a slightly different smoke. You know, I, 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 I've got the badge. I'm going I'm to share that for the roof. I'd love to know what you thought of like, the aftermarket, the power of 50. What makes this an, a, a, a special thing? I think for me, it was really in that people are really being transparent, willing to share their experiences with their couples, and also the trust-based setting where everybody is also being open to what you chat, also in points where the right of always be open about, um, and with the aim of really sharing experience and helping each other yeah. grow. And I think for me, that's what makes the setting really great. You see that everybody is seeing similar challenges and everybody's willing to share how they're tackling these challenges within their respective organizations. 
And there's no one size fits all solution, but by doing this, we can all see what approaches might yeah. work for our organization. Or, or we can switch off our blinkers and yeah. see actually the same problem, but from a different perspective. Exactly. And I agree, there's this collegiate approach that's baked in. Brilliant. Look, Dennis, thank you so much for all the great conversation today and for hanging out. Really good to see you. See you Thanks a lot, Chris. Great. Thanks, Thanks.